What's up everyone, I'm back and so I'm gonna kind of continue on that pain concept but this one's gonna be about free will and I'll probably do the next one on forgiveness and then we'll just see where it goes from there. But when it comes to free will, so um, the easiest way to kind of get this is like when people talk about God or blaming Jesus or blaming, I don't know, they blame a lot of things for things that happen in the world and that has nothing to do with um, a particular kind of like being or person like people don't really know how to cast blame correctly or how to uh, associate uh, actions to people like free will for example like I'm I have the free will to choose whether or not to make videos like whether to make videos or not to make videos right you have the free will to choose to watch it or not to watch it then there, this goes into a little bit into contracts too, but when it comes into your choice, like, and it goes a little bit into the law of attraction as well, but when it goes into choice, like, you always have the choice to participate in something or not to participate in something, and if you're being forced to do something against your own free will, then that's, uh, that's going against a lot of laws out here, human law, like, just, there, it's going against a lot of different laws out here, so... The one real rule or law on the planet, which every other law is basically like a subcategory of, is not you're not allowed to infringe on someone else's free will. So let's say like speeding, like they th that will be kind of like a subcategory of infringing on someone else's free will by uh, necessarily like speeding because it's uh, it's like you're all agreeing to do something, but now you're kind of going outside of those boundaries and. Uh, now when you go outside of those boundaries, you kinda, you're kind of taking uh, advantage of uh, other people. Like it, you're really using your free will to go out of the boundaries of the rules that you agreed upon. So if it's something you didn't agree upon, like when you get a license that so you're agreeing on these things, but if it's something you didn't agree upon and you're not actually like uh, choosing to experience, then that's going against your free will. So people a lot of times will blame everything under the sun and then they'll say that karma was the reason that uh, other people are going through certain things and then the reason you're going through something has nothing to do with karma but uh, then you're kind of negating the aspect of you're kind of negating a lot of uh, laws out here and kind of being hypocritical and not taking into context a lot of things that have happened historically right so like really with free will it's, it's a it goes, it, it, it's something that kind of that kind of uh, crosses over into a lot of different things out here. So you really just got to be very cautious and uh, kind of what do you call it attentive of what you're giving yourself out into and what you're kind of allowing to take in. So it has a lot to do with personal boundaries as well. So again, like. It, when with that judgment part two video would have talked about leadership in context so you have the free will to choose whether or not you're watching certain people's uh, actions whether it be like someone on YouTube or um, someone that's around your area someone like whoever it is you, you have the ability to actually like decide whether or not on your own if you uh, want to pay your actual, pay your attention, like give your attention onto, give your attention onto something. So free will really comes into understanding human nature and really what you're uh, giving out. So a lot of the things that went wrong on the planet doesn't have to do with like God letting things happen. The number one thing that happened with our creation is we are allowed to have free will to make decisions whether or not to do good or evil, which is an oversimplification, but it's basically that. So if I choose to harm you, God's not allowing that to happen. It's allow he's a, What's happening is the allowance of um, good or evil to take place is free will. So it's still, no matter what, every single level of it, it becomes a test, it becomes a... It, 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 start, it, it starts um, the ball rolling, it gives momentum to a lot of new things. So regardless of the position that someone is in right now, 
that has all to do with what you decided to do with your free will and what someone else decided to do with their free will to either like capture yours like put you in a box or if you allowed yourself to be in that box so even if it comes into like for example getting out of a certain situation a lot of people think like fighting your way out or just immediately like attacking someone who's like well like it, it depends on the situation if you're getting like kidnapped like one person literally kidnapping you fighting your way out is definitely going to be for the most part the best way to get out of it like it's pretty obvious on that but if it's like a kind of a higher level version of that now if someone has all the guns someone has all the artillery ammunition all this type of stuff fighting your way out is not going to really be the best possible case scenario especially when they have the ability just to like nuke places and you know all these type of things you gotta have the uh, like if you use your own free will to just like cause a situation like everyone starts fighting their way out of the current position they're in right now that will that could be a trap to allow someone else to invoke things like martial law for example like these type of things are kind of like you have to like connect your thought process with your intuition a little bit more and think on a more dramatic scale like on a more big scale and not think uh, more based on your current needs at this moment and desperation of the of the situation of what you're in right now like if you can come to a consensus as a whole that's what's a, that's what's the best thing to do then maybe that's the best thing to do but still you got like like you got to understand how people can be tricking you to invoke your free will like if you see the whole thing about like a vampire when it comes into a house like you have to invite them into your house right uh that's like it's, it, I'm going to name a bunch of kind of like similarities here. It's like, um, they also say like, um, with Christianity or w really with anybody, but a Christian cannot curse themselves or really like anyone who believes in uh, a religion really can't curse themselves unless, um, or it cannot be cursed unless they curse themselves. And it goes into like a lot of, uh, things with Satan too. Like Satan will have to like change you to do certain things to make you invite evil into your own life. There's a movie called Devil's Advocate. If you watch that, you'll you'll you should watch that movie and you'll see kind of what I mean about about that. Like they say Satan can't lie, but he's just a good deceiver. Like he's a father of lies or whatever, but like he he's not really the liar. Like he's a like in a sense, yes, but it's more about deception. Like if I tell you something straight up like the sky is pink, like that's just like a lie, right? Because clearly it's blue as of right now, right, for the most part of what we can see, so that could just be a lie, right, but if I deceive you into thinking something that's not true without actually lying and leading you to that place, that's not necessarily a lie, that's a deception, it's kind of a, it's like manipulation to avert, to, to divert your thinking to something else so that I'm not necessarily directly lying to you, right, there's a lot of people who have like charismatic uh, personalities and charismatic leadership where like the way I'm talking right now, I'm not using charisma or any of these type of things for the most part. I'm just kind of talking very directly about what things are on a factual, on, a, on like a more factual level without using charisma. Like charisma can get people to use their free will in ways that they shouldn't use it. Like they say Hitler was an extremely charismatic leader. They say like most of the actual highest like cult leaders and uh what's it called yeah cult leaders um also rebel leaders as well uh and uh like radical leaders right have a high amount of charisma they they know how to invoke your like invoke like the inner part of you without maybe even basic facts like like Hitler was Hitler, for example, got uh, a bunch of people to kill people based off of just saying they were superior, based off of one people being blonde hair and then other people having like, you could say more melanin, right? Like, uh, like the Jews of uh, that, the, yeah, the Ashkenazi Jews or whatever of these areas, right? Just having like darker features and like more melanated features, right? So just having more melanin, they said that they're the people of less melanin were superior. This has to do with racism and all these type of things. It has to do with charismatic leadership that speaks to a certain part of people to invoke their free will, to deceive them, to lead them to do things that they wouldn't have done if they were in their right mind. And then at the end of the day, 
It's like they want redemption and forgiveness and all these type of things, but didn't uh, see all of the signs as things were happening, you know, as people were getting changed uh, to be a certain, to be different than they were as of that moment, you know, like, uh, really that movie Devil's Advocate would show you a pretty good understanding of like, how that works, like they, there's a lot of people that will even say Satan's a reptilian, a shapeshifter, uh, like someone, like, like if uh, someone was Satan right in front of you and then they just stepped out of the, like, if they stepped out of the camera view and then they just shapeshift into something else completely, that's like a way to deceive people, like, it's not necessarily they're directly lying because they have to get, like, people who use Satanism and like deception and all these type of things to, trick people isn't necessarily using uh, direct lies, but they're using a form of uh, misleading you so that they can get outside of the kind of the uh, con like the contextual uh, constraints of like karma and universal laws that will screw them up in the future, you know? So really when it comes into free will, you've got to be able to set personal boundaries and be able to set like uh, space so that someone can't encroach on your space, like they can't make you feel, they can't gaslight you or make you feel the type of way that you need to do something or even speak to them, like that, that goes into codependency too, like if you feel like I need to give you something so the relationship keeps going, that's not really a real relationship, like if we have a certain conversation and then I just back off from that completely and then if you maybe like gaslight the whole thing to make me look like a certain type of way but I'm not even saying any of these things for example, that's a certain type of codependency to invoke someone's free will to, uh, to try to use them in certain lights and uh, kind of twist their words to reframe an argument and use charisma to, to win over people when that's not even the actual case, you know? That's a lot of, that has to do with a lot of narcissism, abusive tendencies, and uh, there's a lot of uh, like gaslighting. A lot of issues that go into things like that, but it's all ways to uh, encroach on people's free will and ability to just be, uh, what do you call it, to have their own opinion and, and to speak for themselves. So when it comes to personal boundaries, whether it be if you're living at home with your family or if you're um, going to school and, or if you have a lot of friends that like are really close with you, you got to be able to have a personal, you got to be able to be smart enough to set up personal boundaries so people don't feel obligated to uh, put you in a certain light when you're not actually in that position like though people will put themselves above you by being able to take advantage of certain aspects of you and then use your kindness and uh, uh, ability to keep yourself calm you could say um, against yourself so that they could basically take something from you that's not even that that you actually didn't personally seem like you've lost but in the light of uh, other people it, it feels like like one person has like an edge over you where where you're in another position like these are all kind of charismatic and uh really just abusive tendencies that people carry over from like certain lifestyles that they don't uh, necessarily live right now anymore but it's a personality trait that they continue to bring over into uh new 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 scenarios and new places and things like that so free will is really about being able to set your own boundaries and really being able to speak for self, like when it comes into even legal terms about the situation that pretty much most, well, pretty much all most melanated people are in the Americas for the most part, and around the world, but for the most part, this part of the Ameri in the Americas is if you're not able to legally, like if you see in the in the United States, uh, I think it's USC code, I forget the exact law, but the, there's a, it shows you that uh, a United States citizen is a civilly dead person and they are basically saying that they're legally incompetent because they can't legally represent themselves and understand that, um, understand how to re represent themselves on a national level so they, their nationality becomes like basically part of um, the corporation of the United States of America, right? Instead of actually being like, there's a difference of representing yourself as a sovereign person on the land of America versus being on the land of America and a U.S. citizen, which is known as civilly dead and legally incompetent, meaning you don't know how to do anything legally within the terminology of law. 
so you become, uh, they basically own your free will. So the, the corporation of the United States would own your free will, which has officially been a corporation for like, for a long time now. These are all, these are all like, these are all official and you can, you can all, look, you can look all this kind of stuff up, but yeah, so free will can go into legal capacities, personal capacities, uh, it can go into economic, uh, even just being able to provide for yourself with the resources and things like that, and having land and all these type of things. So really regaining your free will becomes a uh, important topic in understanding uh, how to get yourself out of cycles of pain and how to get yourself out of uh, situations where people aren't abusing certain qualities of you, which I'll go into a little bit more in uh, the next video, which I'll do in forgiveness. So yeah, that should be pretty, pretty good and pretty short to be able to kind of explain uh, a lot of kind of high encompassing, uh, high encompassing like uh, concepts of free will that you'll be able to like kind of put into a lot of different scenarios in life, you know? So yeah, with that, I'll build on it with the next video. Peace.